I am Nicole Everett, the host of Conversations with Nicole, and today we are at the saloon at the pavilion for, actually my birthday, we are celebrating my annual party with a purpose, and my very special guest is a community chick that some of you know, but others of you I'm going to introduce you to Mrs. Talithia Edwards. Welcome, Talithia. Thank you, Nicole. Yeah, so... You have been here for a few years now, quite some time. Yeah. Because you came here to go to FAMU. I did, 18 years ago. 18 years ago. Yeah. All right. And what did you study at FAMU? English. English. I was an English major. I was planning to head to law school after college, but I met my husband and never left. Uh Uh-huh. And how long have you been married? 14 years. Wow. Mm -hmm. And you have how many children with Mr. Edwards? Seven children. Seven children. Yeah. How many boys, how many girls? Um, three three boys, four girls. And what are the age ranges? Um, this is their birth month, so everybody is turning a new age. 14, 12, 11, 10, 9, 6, and 5. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how you do it. I know, sometimes I wonder myself. Uh-huh, wow. I need to be cloned. You do. You do. You uh, have a hashtag that you use. Oh, yeah, my hashtag, more kids than arms. More kids than arms. Yeah, so it used to be five kids, two arms, and then we had number six, and I was like, ah, no. So more kids than arms is the hashtag I use. Wow, wow. Now, you are a community chick, for real. Involved, or you live in Bond, but you are also the Greater Bond Neighborhood Association president. Yes. And there's a lot of things going on in Bond, um, and particularly with the CRA, which is Community Reinvestment Agency, um, with the city of Tallahassee, you all were given $6.4 million yeah. to do some important community work there. Yeah, so we created a, the neighborhood first plan. So we were the second neighborhood that participated in the city's neighborhood public safety initiative. And as we were going through that process, which included community engagement, neighborhood revitalization, beautification, public safety, we had already began the conversation to um, say that we wanted to do some sector planning. And so it was the perfect time that we were bringing all stakeholders together and so it took us probably about 16 months to create the Neighborhood First Plan. It has four um, priority areas, public safety, beautification, economic development, and um, what? four. Economic development, public safety, oh, land use. Okay. Yeah. And so it was adopted in December by the CRA, and they awarded us um, $6.4 million to implement that plan. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, what does this mean um, in terms of, I guess, other neighborhoods? What are the implications of that? Yeah, it's really heavy, right? Because this is the largest investment by the CRA um, in a neighborhood, and specifically a South Side neighborhood. That's important, right? Because our neighborhoods have been traditionally disinvested. And so it's really important to me as a president that as we begin to implement this plan, that we do things that are going to add impact and value to the neighborhood. We want to see some nice things, but we want to make sure that the value comes to the neighborhood. We want to do some affordable housing. We want to um, create, we, we um, created a residential facade grant from this money and we're starting off this year with $150,000, but increasing that pot so that homeowners can apply for up to $10,000 to do residential facade improvements to their home. That gives them a benefit of value to the home. So it's really important that we get this right because everybody's watching and then other neighborhoods are gonna come behind us and we, we want them to have that same opportunity. 
Awesome, awesome. Now you mentioned affordable housing. What what do you believe affordable housing would look like in the Bond neighborhood? Or what believe, are you hoping that it would look like? I'm hoping that we want to increase our home ownership, right? We're about 80 plus percent um, renters. So we want to increase our home ownership. So we definitely want single family homes, but we're not um, opposed to multifamily homes okay. because we understand the affordable housing crisis here in Tallahassee. And so not everybody wants to be homeowners. It's a lot of responsibility that comes along with that. So we're hoping to do some mixed use and some um, single family, but I would love to um, have some single family homes increase in the neighborhood. Now, you know, I sit on the board for Habitat yeah. and this party is a benefit for Habitat. I would love to see some Habitat housing go along in the Yes, barn. yes, yes. I, I threw that out there. I love the homes that Habitat built. I was a part of the Women Build um, home this mm -hmm. year for Miss Jessica. Yes. And it was such a rewarding experience, but even more so to see the quality of the homes that are built mm -hmm. by Habitat. And so I'm hoping that we can ask for a million dollars and at least half of that Habitat can build. I know with a half, half a million dollars, 10 homes. Mm -hmm. So that, that'll be good. That would be tremendous. Yeah. Now, you recently received um, a baby. I did. <laughs> and this wasn't a baby that you gave birth to. No, uh, not, not a part of my seven. Not a part of your seven. No. Tell me a little bit about that. So, yeah, I have a, well, I call him community baby. Community baby. And I've had him now for eight weeks. So I had him since he was five days old. His mother is a woman that, you know, kind of lives and walks around in our neighborhood. And she brought that baby to my house with a handwritten note asking if we could care for him. Mm. And we thought it would be temporary, you know, but it's eight weeks now and we, we have that baby and we're loving on him. And mm -hmm. we're, I'm his mama. You, you are know? his mama. <laughs> yeah. And it's no other way to say that. I'm, I'm, I'm loving him and, and I'm seeing those imprints on his brain and watching him grow. And again, because I don't have legal custody of him, the future is uncertain. And that's, that's just the honest truth about it because his mother does have custody of him and she can at any moment come and get him mm -hmm. um, if she chooses to. But we have in our hearts and in our minds decided that if she doesn't, we will move forward to adopt that baby. Wow, now so, the community yeah. has kind of rallied around you oh, yeah. in, in many regards in terms of providing diapers and wipes and clothes and things of that nature. Oh yeah, so he's definitely a community baby. And so when I hashtag that, I was thinking about kind of the circumstances in which he got to us, right? And the work that we do, we do we're trying to eradicate some of those issues in our neighborhoods. And so the community literally from all sides of Tallahassee, not just the South side, but everywhere in this city has wrapped around and sent diapers, cars, cash app, um, the, the churches, you know, Greater Mount Zion had a little baby dedication for him nice. um, after a few weeks when I had him. And those things warmed my heart to see us come together with this baby. People know that I have a lot of kids already. So I've had people come and say, well, I'll take them for a few days so you can babysit or a few hours so you can clean up. And that has been wonderful. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Now, I know that children and community are something that you're real passionate about. You have done a lot of work in the school arena with Bond Elementary, your children attending there mm -hmm. um, at, at some point. What are some changes that you'd like to see within the school? And you also serve on as the Title One advisory. Advisor, yes, exactly. So talk yes. about that role for a moment. So yeah, so that's kind of one of my passions, right? Family, community, and early childhood education is really what I'm passionate about. And so I would love to see our schools increase in performance. We understand that school grade is not the end all, be all of what's happening in the school. But it is a mark of what's, of what's going on. When we look at those third grade reading scores that were posted in the paper a little while ago, all of our schools on the south side are not doing well. What is that saying? What do we have to do? So as a community member, I want to know, how do I come in, right? Is that reading to a child? Is that going into primary to help with the sight words? Is that hosting a literacy class with the parents? get the information. I'm hoping to get a pop-up preschool off the ground. It's something that I'm working on. Okay, pop-up preschool. Oh yeah, so I believe in 
immediately meeting the need. I don't think that you have to have large, large amounts of money to get the end result. And so this pop-up preschool is kind of a two-gen approach to the um, literacy issues we're having in our schools. And so it's bringing the um, kindergarten and readiness information right to the neighborhoods, is training parents so that they can teach their children, and then those skills are then transfer transferable to employability. Awesome, look awesome. at you. So, yeah. I didn't know about that idea. Yeah. So y'all, just so y'all know, Talitha and I confer on a regular basis, and she is full of ideas. Yeah. Always coming up with something new that she wants to try and do, so. Yeah. Oh, that's and a good my one. snow cones, I'm waiting. Yeah, I know, she, she wants to get this snow cone machine and she's gonna make all this money and uh, do these great and wonderful things. So, yeah. um, great, I, that, that, that was one that I was not expecting. So you have also um, been heavily involved in just community activism, right? Um, you know, meeting with some of the city, some of the public officials, I'm not just gonna say city, some of the public officials to get some things done. What advice would you give to folks that want to get involved in community activism? Um, the first advice is just do it, right? So many times we wait to have the right amount of training. And I came in as a novice. I still consider myself a novice. I've only been working in community four years. This is my fourth year. And so it's on the job training. Every day is something new to learn as personalities. Our um, city officials are going to change. Our public officials are going to change. So it's learning what those interests are. And so any advice, you see a problem, get in, tackle it. I think it's this is all of our community. So all of us um, definitely have a hand in making it better. So that will be my initial thing. Just get up, get involved and do it. Find a cause and move forward. But second, I would say stay true to yourself, right? Don't go outside of what are not your interests. And so you see people a lot, they'll they pull here and there, but find out what your interests are Stay in that lane and I think you'll do well. All right, great advice. We are gonna take a break right here, but when we come back, we'll find out a little bit more about Mrs. Talithia Edwards. All right. All right, you all stay tuned for more conversations. Welcome back to Conversations with Nicole. If you're just joining us, we are here at the saloon at the pavilion at the center. And my special guest is Mrs. Talithia Edwards, the community chick. And we are have been talking about some of your community involvement with Title I, with the Bond Neighborhood Association. Now you, not too long ago, went on a trip to Greenville, South Carolina. Yeah. Um, with the chamber. Yes. Tell us about that experience. That experience was a paradigm shift for me because I started all of my work in advocacy on the South Side and we see day daily what we're facing, right? The poverty, the housing insecurity, our education system. When I went to Greenville and I was, we were in um, South Carolina and they had a linear story. Everywhere we went, everyone told the same story, regardless of how they got there they told that same story. And what really stood out to me is that they had um, a K-2 through 20 education system. And so they were very, very conscious about training the children to enter the labor force mm -hmm. and making a decent wage. So um, I saw that they had elementary, middle, and high school public engineering schools. Mm -hmm. It raised everybody's eyebrow. Like, how do they get in? How many kids? Who can go? It's public. Any parent that can get their kids there, they can go there. Wow. So what they did was they built on their um, manufacturing industry of their city, and, and they invited industry to come in. And um, when we were there, we, we didn't see any neighborhoods like ours, right? So I was asking, like, what are people? We don't see people. We only see industry. But they told a story that they wanted us to hear, but something that was interesting about Greenville, 30 years ago, which is not a long time ago, the downtown property that is now like worth millions of dollars was $4 a square foot, mm. which meant that anybody could have bought property to be downtown, mm -hmm. but everybody didn't, right? So as we were hearing the story, we were hearing that the black people in Greenville couldn't afford to come downtown, but 30 years ago, $4 is not a lot of money, 
It made me think about Bond. Mm. It made me think about South Side of Tallahassee mm. and how our property is cheap right now. We can buy houses for ten and twelve thousand dollars. We can buy lots for four or seven thousand dollars. But we're overlooking that. But and we're trying to have a conversation about gentrification, but we gotta begin to see the value in owning what belongs to us so that we won't be telling a story 30 years from now saying that the lots were one and two dollars a square foot, but we didn't buy it. Yes. So it's a new story being told. So that, that was a paradigm shift for me. That's awesome, yeah. that's awesome. Now I'm gonna shift gears a little bit to talk a little bit more about family since again, I know you get that question all the time in terms of how do you manage and juggle a husband, yeah. seven children, and a plus one, yeah. and your community work. So how do you balance it all? Day to day, it's, it's not easy, but I was able to, of course, you have one kid at a time, right? So I learned how, as I had another baby, add it all in. And are, am I tired? Yeah, you're tired every day, but people with one, one child is tired. And so the work that I do, I want my kids to see that service is supposed to be outside of yourself. And so I continue to do that so that they see that. And and I really do balance my family life. Everyone knows that my family is priority, that I will drop everything to make sure that I'm doing what I need to do for my kids, that I'm where they need me to be, that my husband is fed, you know. People, it sounds a little bit parochial, but I'm a wife and he does, he takes great care of us and he, he expects some of those things. And so we, 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 we balance very well with each other. He supports what I do, and so I'm very, very happy about that. And, you know, he used to be like another meeting, but he understands that it pays off, you know, and so yeah, so that's that's how I balance. I blog, I journal about it. I tried to blog, but that seemed too okay. personal, but right, right. I journal well, about it. All right. Yeah. Now, what are some things that Talithia wants to do in the future? What I would love to do is I would love to move to more professional consulting on community engagement. I think I understand a little bit of connecting people just through this whole process. I, I love um, entertaining and cooking. So we don't have a Southside brunch spot. Mm -hmm. So I, I, want, I would love to host a Southside brunch spot with some live music called Sweet Tea's Place or something like that. <laughs> and I, I We've think talked about that. We have. Mm -hmm. We have talked about that. So I actually, I can cook. I like to cook. And so I think that is in the future some transitions along with um, a podcast. I shared that with you. Mm -hmm. That uh, it's only for myself right now, but it's called The Wondering Wonder Woman. Mm -hmm. It encompasses all of who I am as a wife, a mother, and a community chick, mm -hmm. as we dub it. And um, hopefully to get that off the ground, but one step at a time, trying to implement this bond plan right now, and then we'll move to some other stuff. All right. Now, you and I frequent this place yes. on Tuesdays and Thursdays yes. for two-step Tuesdays and Thursdays. Oh, yeah. And what do you see as the benefits of that? I see this as... It's almost like a family reunion, right? We come here every week. But it's really to let our hair down. It's to come have honest conversation, really good fellowship, and networking. We, we come here as a break from the outside community, right? And the business and the work that we do every day to really do something that, 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 that refreshes all of us. And the relationships that are formed from this have been really, really good to my soul. And so I... Got my allowance increased to come <laughs> to come to come to come to two step, but no, it's a, it's it's definitely a great place. Um, mostly black folk, right? We're in here. It's diversifying. Um, we've seen it over the you know last couple of weeks, but we come together and we have a really good vibe. It's grown ups, yes, it so is. we're not worrying about like a lot of rowdiness. And so it's just a great, great place to be. Indeed, it is. So we tease about Talithia's allowance because she is a stay at home mom. Yeah. And she does get, uh, you know, an allowance to do some I things that she likes that to do. <laughs> it's all good. My allowance. It's all good. It's all good. Now, as it relates to Tallahassee, you know, you, you've seen a lot of shifts and, and moves. You know, you've been referred to as a transplant coming here from Miami. Oh, yeah. And, um, you know, what do you, what do you say to those folks who call you a transplant and, and feel like you have no stake or no say in what's going on, and especially in the bond community, which is, you know, 
people have deep roots there. Yeah, it was hurtful at first, right? Because I came to FAMU from Miami. I've really always been in the Bond community. I didn't realize it was called Bond, but um, after my freshman year, they, there was no place to stay. And my mom couldn't afford a traditional college house. And so there on Houghton Street, there was an apartment, what I thought was an apartment complex, come to find out it was a project. And I got off the bus and I went and asked the man, you know, is space available? Would, would that have been Swacoco? Swacoco Villa, yes. And so he said to me, you can't stay here. This is for families. And I'm like, I'm a family for one person. <laughs> and he was like, no, this is HUD housing. And he explained what that was. And I promised him, I said, sir, if you don't let me live here, I'm going to have to go back home to Miami and I'm going to be nothing. And his name was Mr. Nelson. I don't know where he is today, but he allowed me to live there. I promised that I would tutor the kids and I would be the best, you know, resident he let live there. And I kept my promise. I tutored children. And uh, shortly after, I married my husband and we bought our house on Saxon Street. So I've birthed all my children in that home. I've lived in that home for 12 years. And so to be called a transplant, I took that kind of personal. Most of us migrate here to Tallahassee and we make Tallahassee home. I'm just as committed and invested in making this community better and my neighborhood better as, as the, the one who's been here 30, 40, 50 years, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's not to discount those who come before me, but how do we come alongside, right? You understand the history and the narrative and you can inform my work by helping me understand from whence we've come and as we move forward to where we're going. So. I say, hey, I'm not a transplant. Okay. I'm, a, I'm, I'm working to advance this place. All right. Love it. <clears throat> great, great ending. I, I can't, n nothing more needs to be said. But thank you. Thank you for taking the time to have a conversation with me and be my guest for the last segment of season seven. C congratulations on all that you are doing in the community good luck with community baby baby romel and we will continue to support you in that effort thank you nicole i appreciate it all right all right stay tuned for more conversations CW Medical Moment, I am meeting with Dr. Daryl Hunt, the Trauma Center at Tallahassee Memorial Healthcare. Welcome, Dr. Hunt. Thank you very much. So we are here in the Trauma Center, and my question is, what's the difference between emergency and trauma? So trauma, particularly injured patients, so whether that's a car accident, a gunshot wound, a stabbing, those represent our trauma patients, and it's a collaborative effort between the ER physicians and the trauma team. Okay, and there are certain levels as it relates to that? Yes, so there's a level two trauma, which is mainly the criteria aren't set. It's mainly the physicians hear the report and make it a level. Uh, a level one is our highest level of alert, and that's for patients who really show signs and symptoms of being truly injured with life-threatening injuries. Okay, what are some of the traumas that you see here at TMH? Most of we see here is car accidents. So 80% of our traumas are blunt and about 15 to 20% are penetrating, which can be a gunshot wound or a stabbing. Wow, 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 wow. Now, you know, trauma season, are there some times that you see more traumas sure. than others? Or? So that it used to be that the summertime, when people had more time off, that you'd see a big spike in trauma. However, over the years, our demographics has changed and most of the people we see now are actually elderly people with falls. And that happens any time of the year, so we don't see that spike that we used to see. Mm -hmm. Is there, would you give any advice on how to prevent traumas from happening? Sure, there's a couple things I would advise. Don't text and drive. Don't drink and drive. Uh, be aware of your surroundings at all times, and if you feel unsteady or unbalanced as an elderly person, get help. Okay, well thank you for your time. You're welcome. All right, stay tuned for more conversations. Welcome back. Well, it is time for us to close out, but before we do, I have just a couple more questions to leave you. Now, you know my signature question is about food. So, what type of food do you like? So, I'm a really, really simple person. My favorite dish is spaghetti. Okay, that's cool, spaghetti's good. And then if you could describe your life as a flavor or a spice, what would it be? Mm. 
lot of mixed in there, maybe complete seasoning. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you again for being my guest. And we have several folks around us, so we're going to close this season out with a little jingle. All right. All right. Come on. So, one, two, three. Conversations with Nicole. Conversations with Nicole. Conversations with Nicole. Conversations with Nicole.